Okay, so our next speaker is Tachapal Saranurak from University of Michigan, and he's going to talk about how to use expanders for dynamic graph algorithms. Okay, thank you. So yeah, this talk is gonna be about connection between expanders and dynamic graph algorithms. And I will just go through this quickly. Dynamic graph algorithm in general is just a problem where you start with a graph, but now the graph is dynamic. So you have some sequence of updates, which is basically usually just edge, the insertion or deletion. And the task can be various things, right? You want to maintain some object like minimum spanning tree or to support some useful query like connectivity query. And the goal usually is just to get fast update time. Ideally, we want it to be uh, polylog time. And now expanders. Expander, I, like uh, intuitively, is just a graph such that it is robustly connected. And this graph just occur in many contexts. It can be a random graph, can be some uh, uh, social network graph in Hypercube and something algebraic. Um, all of this really kind of, you think of it as kind of a complete graph, but sparse. So somehow it's very well connected, but sparse, okay? But okay, let's look at the formal definition of expander. So in this talk, expander means the following. So I said that the graph is a phi expander. If for any, for any cut S, right? Where S is on the smaller side. Yeah. Well, you have that. The cut size is kind of big compared to the volume. So what are these two things? So the cut size is just the weight of edges crossing S. So the, the red thing here, the red edges here. And the volume is the total weight of edges that is incident to S. So this is basically count the, count the guy that cross S2, but it also count the edges that are inside S, okay? And we said the graph is an expander if um, it's a phi expander, if the cut is big compared to the volume. So relatively many edges are crossing the cut, not, not too many, like um, quite quite big fraction of edges crossing the cut. You see? Okay. And I will also just say that if this condition is not true, then I said that S is a sparse cut, it's a five sparse cut. Okay. So basically, the graph is a phi expander if a graph has no phi sparse cut. And when I said that the graph is expander, usually I think of phi as one over polylog or one over n to little one. So not constant, but close to constant. Now there is some history about like how these two uh, these two things are connected, how expander are, are useful in dynamic graph. So actually like uh, almost 20 years ago already, there are like uh, quite a de development for static algorithm for expanders. So there are a bunch of static algorithm related to expander that could have been applied to the dynamic graph problem because there are fast algorithm for computing balance cut by Schwimmer and Cheng, and then there is cut matching game, and all of this kind of gives you fast static algorithm about expanders. And then after that, like uh, 2007, there is a first use uh, of expanders into almost dynamic graph. This is a work by uh, uh, Mihai Pratascu and Mikhail Thorup. Um, they show that for a problem of connectivity oracle, you can actually handle, like they show the data structure that can handle like a single batch of update. Okay. So it's kind of almost dynamic in the sense that you can still handle some update, but it's a single batch of update, not that there is no, if they don't end, handle the next update. Okay. But this is why I said it's almost dynamic. But like this is very inspiring uh, paper actually. And, um, but then like uh, 10 years later, 
then we kind of we show that actually extender are actually very useful for dynamic graph problem itself. And this is when uh, Daniel Pond, I, and Christian Wolf Nelson uh, show that one can improve the update time of dynamic spanning tree, minimum spanning tree from square root n to something like n to little one. So that's like a kind of a big improvement in update time. But then basically after this work, like a few last few years, it turns out that expander become like it's become clear that expanders are very, very useful for the new graph problem. There are like a more than 10 paper that use expander for the new graph problem by now. So this is like a very exciting development. And basically my goal is to really describe all of the key tools related to expander. That is, that is behind this recent development. So sometimes I will not like uh, go into the details how to construct this tool, but maybe it's already useful for you to just know the existent, uh, existential of, of these tools. Just a statement sometimes is useful. Okay, so I want to explain all these tools. And all of these two really are just try to answer two main questions. The first question is that, how come expander are great at all for dynamic, for dynamic problems? And the second problem is that, okay, this is a dynamic graph problem. Graph might not be expander. So what if the graph is not expander? How can we still exploit expander in, in dynamic graph? So in each of these two questions, there are several tools behind it. And I will just go through this one by one. Okay. So in this talk, okay, N will be the number of vertices. M is number of edges. And I will use tilde to hide polylog and hat or hat to hide like N to little one. Okay. So let's go with the first thing. Why expander are great for dynamic problem? The first thing is that expander are just very algorithmic friendly. So many, many problems become very easy once it come to once you have that the graph is an expander. The first, the first example I want to give is a problem of routing on expander or expander routing. In this problem, suppose that you have that input is expander, so one over polylog expander. Okay. And what you want to ask is that you, you, you query this thing, which is S1, T1, S2, T2, uh, up to S N over 2, T N over 2. So just a bunch of pairs of, of vertices. Okay. Now, what you want to do is to just find a short path between S I to T I. So you want a path from SI to TI for all I. Each of these paths should be short. Okay. So in the little one length. But at the same time, it must have low congestion, which I mean that each edge can appear in not too many paths. So you cannot have, you, can, you cannot use like a, all the paths kind of go through one edge. That, that's not allowed. Okay. So this is, Actually, like a kind of well studied problem a uh, long time ago, and like some simple algorithm, like, like a greedy algorithm, would do it. Um, however, all of this uh, kind of algorithm from, from some 20, 20 years ago, they need at least quadratic time. And, why, and that is actually very natural time that we, you, could, you, you would hope for. The reason is this. There are like, there are n pairs of nodes, right? And usually when you try to construct one path, you should at least read the graph. So you spend linear time per pair, so that gives you quadratic time. But now it turns out that the, the extra, the extra, actually there is an algorithm that can do it in O n time, O n query time, after O m preprocessing time. Okay, and this also can be extend to work in, in the, even after the graph, and like, even if you have edge deletion. 
So this is quite surprising because you see like the time that you really spend on each path is really just kind of almost constant. Okay. So this is like one fundamental problem that can be done very like uh, quickly once you have the graphics extender. Okay. Let me give you another example. What is good on expander? Uh, this is a problem of specifying expander. So you have an expander graph as an input. And now what you want to find is um, to find cut specifier, which is just a subgraph of, of a graph such that this edge is sparse. It has only kind of n weighted edges. You must reweight the, re the graph a bit, but it is sparse. It's not n square edges. But at the same time, the cut size of every, of every cut S is preserved up to one plus epsilon factor. Okay. So it's a cut specifier. Now there is a very easy algorithm that, um, that can be done on expander. The algorithm is just this. For every edge E, you just put an edge E into edge with probability PE. And this PE is can be computed very easily. So it's just some number such that it is pro pro proportional to one over minimum of degree of U and, and V. Just a um, minimum over like a degree of the endpoint. Okay. So you see like this information is, is very local information, very easily to be maintained and, and compute. So if, it, if this is like some general graph, this would be replaced by uh, effective resistance. But you see, once the graph is expanded, this thing is so, so simple to, to be maintained and computed. And once, and once you, if you put an edge into edge, you put a weight, like you set a weight to, to be one over. PE. Anyway, you see that a problem of computing Spotify, cut Spotifyer of an expander is just so easy to compute. And just by looking at this thing, you can con try to convince yourself that, OK, this thing should be data noiseable. OK. There are more problems that is, can be very easy once you have a that the graph is the expander. But these two things, routing and specifying, is really the two main thing that people repeatedly exploit. Okay. So now you know that a lot of things is easy once you have a graph expander. The next thing I want to say is that um, this is really answering why expander are great for dynamic, dynamic setting. This is because expander are robust and update. So what I mean by robust and an update. The intuition that you that I want to give you first is here. If the graph is not an expander, so there is like this sparse cut where you can just delete a few edges and the graph kind of disconnect into two sides, big two big sides. Okay. When you have the when the graph is not expanded, you have this sparse cut, right? So if you delete these sparse edges along this sparse cut, then the graph can be disconnected into two big connected components. And this is kind of intuitively, intuitively is a big change. And we don't like that in the dynamic problem. Okay. On, the, on the other hand, if the graph is expanded, imagine that you delete two edges here. But you know that if the graph is expanded, there must be many, many, many other edges crossing this cut. You cannot disconnect them. So you, this thing would not disconnect. And if you delete a bunch of edges here, let's say k edges, what, you can, what can happen is just you can disconnect something like some part of the graph of volume around k. So, so once you delete, K edges, you can disconnect only portion of the graph of volume around K. So this is like, once you like, feel a few update can cause you only small change in the graph. 
That's why that's the intuition behind it. So now um, these tools, extended pruning, really make this uh, uh, formal. And it's, it's really to the tool that all of the, all of the dynamic algorithm that exploit extender use it. So it's very important and I want to tell you what it is now. Okay. Expander pruning start with an expander, yeah. And then let's say that there are a sequence of update. Let's say you delete some HE1. The algorithm of expander pruning will maintain some vertex set P, okay. It returns, it will maintain some set P such that, so this is important, such that the complement of P remain an expander, okay. And this will keep going on. You do some other update. You, you, it, it maintains this set P and the rest of the graph is still good. The rest is still expander, okay. And keep, this keep going. And the important thing is that the algorithm guarantee that this set P the problematic set or the prune set here, just keep growing very slowly. So at the set P at time I has size or volume just around I. So in, on average, this set P just grow by almost constant size per update. Okay. And you can update this set in the time which is fast too. So this is what I mean by, so, so you see like, each update can cause you this, the set P to grow so slowly. So each update can cause you small problem, but the rest of the graph remain extender. And you know that the extender is so great. So, so this, this is why like, uh, things can be done a lot once you have an extender. And you see um, extender is really necessary here because if you actually start with non-extender and there is sparse cut, well, if you delete these two edges, how big the set P should be just after deleting two edges. The set P must be like uh, this big, just to, come, just to guarantee that the complement is even connected at all. Okay. So P can grow slowly only if you start with the expander. Any question up to this point? All right, so then my, uh, the next key question I want to, to address is, okay, we know that things are very nice and, and good once you have that the graph is expander, but what if the graph is not an expander? The first and more successful tool is expanded decomposition. So let's go to this. What is expanded decomposition? So it's a problem where you have a graph G and the parameter phi, and it output a partition of vertices, V1 up to VK, such that each part induces an expander, induces a phi expander. Okay. And at the same time, uh, there are just five, five fraction of edges that are crossing each part. So you get a well-connected part such that each part are sparsely connected. So it's a very natural uh, graph clustering uh, process. And actually just the statement here is already nice to keep in mind, right? It, what it means is that for any graph at all, any graph is really just a bunch of disjoint expanders plus a small fraction of edges because you can set phi here to be like a, so that this thing is like a m over 100. Good. And the nice thing about this decomposition is also that you, you actually can be, you can compute this uh, very fast and even deterministically. Okay. Now, suppose that we want to maintain this thing dynamically 
uh, we can do it actually, and I will explain how. So now the goal is just to maintain this object when the graph undergo H, undergo, is undergoing edge updates, and we want to maintain this position at all time. And I think of phi as one over into the one. And I will show you how to do this uh, with like a fast update time. Okay. So actually you, we have all the tools now because um, we have extended pruning algorithm. So the idea is the following. How to make, how to maintain expanded decomposition dynamically. Well, just start in the beginning, just start with the static algorithm that compute expanded decomposition for you. And then after that, you just run extended pruning on top of each expander, right? So what, do, what will happen? No, so, okay, you start with this expanded decomposition. Now some update come. Well, the, the expanded pruning algorithm will keep pruning some part of your expander out. This part will keep like, kind of growing slowly. Okay. But you know that the rest, the blue part here, we would remain an expander. So that's good. And what do you know about uh, the prune part? The prune part will grow slowly. So there, in total, there will have not too many edges if the number of updates is not too many, if the number of updates is not too much. If there are too many updates, you can like uh, say that you restart and have good amortized time. That is some, some trick to even make it worst case time, but. Anyway, um, so if the number of update is small, this prune part is small. So what we can do, you can just treat all of this prune part as intercluster edges, as the red edges that, that cross this thing, that cross this part. So in total, the total, the total number of red edges, the prune part and original red edges is gonna be just small fraction of, of M. Right. So that's that's why you, you say that at any time, just by treating this prune part as an intercluster edges, that's your expanded decomposition. Okay, and the update time is fast because extended pruning is fast. Okay, so let's see why, how come this is useful at all? Why do we, like, uh, how to use expanded decomposition dynamic, expanded decomposition for something? The, the application that which is easiest is the cut specifier. Okay, so, so I just repeated the definition of cut specifier, cut, cut specifier here. You have the graph that undergo edge update and you want to maintain cut specifier at all time. Okay. The idea is just here. So I'm telling you the algorithm. Just start with your whole graph, compute, expanded decomposition, okay. and set the parameter phi so that there are m over two in the cluster edges. And let's say that this e prime, let e prime denote this set of in the cluster edges. Just move all of these red edges to here. So this graph is just a graph induced by the red edges, E prime. Okay. This graph now would have at most M over two edges. It's a smaller graph. Okay. What we can do, just try to compute expanded decomposition on this E prime, the graph induced by E prime. So, you get something, you get expanded decomposition, but now this intercluster edges is now of size M over four. And now you get an idea, you can repeat this process. Um, lock in many times, because each time you shrink it by, by a factor of two. What do we get from, from doing this? We get that given any graph at all, you can partition a set of edges into expanders. So every edge participate in exactly one expander. And these expanders are not 
not overlapping too much in the following sense. You can say that each vertex can appear in a false log n expander because they are just log n many level. Okay, so I call this thing repeated expanded de decomposition because you just repeatedly call this decomposition. And now, actually, you can maintain this structure in time, which is n to little one, because for each of these thing, each of these log n thing is just dynamic expanded decomposition that you need, and you can maintain expanded decomposition. So, okay. Let's say that we, you can maintain this structure here, right? So what, what we can do from, from this structure, now we can, we can get cut specifier from it quite directly. How? So you have a graph, right? You just compute this repeated expanded decomposition and look at each expander in it. Let's say this one. Just specify each of the expander. How to specify expander, I already told you, is something super simple where you just look at each edge and like a sample it would probably be something like one over mean of degree u and v. And this can be done dynamically because it's so simple. Um, and now once you specify each expander, what you do is just union all of these specified expanders together. And I claim that just compute this union of specified expander, and now you're done. And um, there's nothing co uh, complicated about this. Um, this is just correct because specifier, cut specifier are composable in the sense that the union of specifier is also, it's just a specifier of the union of, of things. So, so if you, you like, if you look at Okay, yeah. I think, uh, please. T2? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Could you please say it again? I Yeah, we, 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 we choose phi just so that G2 has M over two edges. Oh, so, so this is an expanded decomposition, right? So I really just choose phi here to be small enough. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, more question about how to get a uh, card specifier in the please. So actually you can, let's say that you can just add like a, if you insert not too many edges, you can just add it into let's say a junk, uh, junk level and just treat them as like a, its own graph. Yeah, and after you add a lot of edges, then you can do this expanded decomposition and then make it like just lock a level of things. Yeah. Oh, this actually works for spectral graph, uh, spectral, spectral specifier. Yes. All right, thanks. Okay, good. So yeah, what I told you, basically the idea is you have expanded decomposition, you have expanded pruning, you get dynamic version of decomposition. And from that, like um, it's not too complicated to get dynamic cut specifier or actually spectral cut spectral specifier. And now actually there are other kind of specification. What I told you is edge specification, but if you use vertex specification like in Gramos talk, you can do you can get something else. 
um, like uh, MST or edge, edge connectivity and so on. Okay. So using different kind of specification on top of, of Expander, you get some other application. And the fact that you can do Expander routing fast on Expander, it allows the other application too. Okay. And by the way, uh, there was like a, this paper that is about reachability. In this work, I just want to mention quickly that actually that we use uh, Vertex Expander and also it's the expanded decomposition on directed graph. Doesn't matter that much what it means here. My point is this framework actually works with other variants of expanders. It's kind of robust in this sense. Yeah. All right, good. So now um, I wanna tell you a bit more about the next approach called expander hierarchy. So this is a kind of extension of expanded decomposition. Good. So just to recall, you have expanded decomposition, you partition the graph into five expander, and there are just five fractions of edges crossing. There are like there is another way to, to repeatedly call expanded decomposition, which is very natural. That is just to repeat it decompose on, on the contracted graph. So you have a graph, decompose it, and um, you get expander and there are five fraction of edges here. Now just contract this well-connected cluster into one node. Okay. You get a smaller graph. This would be like a, um, the red edges here become red edges here. Repeat, decompose again, and contract the cluster until, just keep doing this until there is no edge left. So that's a very natural way to, to recurse it, to recurse. And if you choose phi to be, let's say, uh, one half, there would be, uh, you choose phi to be like uh, small enough, like this, then there will be like uh, at most square root n levels. Um, you can choose phi such that there are log n levels too, but it turns out that the application, I would need it to be square root log n to make it useful. Okay. okay, but you can see that from this contraction, it gives you a natural lamina family, right? So like uh, each of this node, like for each of the cluster, you just connect all the node in the, in the cluster into into the thing that into the thing that you contracted to. Okay. So, so this recursive structure induces a tree okay. because it gives you lamina family such that the vertices of original graph is the leaf of this tree, and you can specify some capacity of this of this tree edge in some natural way, but Okay, and, and it, the parent of, of each node correspond to the expander containing that node. Okay, okay. this is very nice route tree, but it turns out that this tree is not really useful yet. I, I don't, at least I don't know how to use it. Okay, but actually with just one tweak, it's gonna be super powerful. So what is that tweak? The tweak is the following. I will, instead of, I will, I need to tell you what is parallel link expanded decomposition. So it's the same thing that given the graph G and phi, it compute partition of nodes such that now it's G to the beta of VI that is a phi expander. I need to tell you what is this thing, G beta VI. So, for each of these, so look at this graph. As for each of the edge that are crossing, let's say that I add beta self loop at both endpoint. And beta would be something like one over five, which is think of it as something much bigger than one. 
So they add a bunch of self loop on both endpoints of the red edges. And G to the beta VI is really just GVI after adding this self loop. So now that now you can see that the statement that I can partition a graph so that G beta VI is ex expander. And at the same time, this is, this is there are just five fraction of edges crossing, which is the same thing. This statement is just strictly stronger than normal expanded decomposition. Because if G beta VI is an expander, then so is G VI. Because once you add self loop, you really just increase volume without increase any cut size. Right? So so this is like this is stronger. But why do we want this at all? I will just tell you graph intuition. So in expander, we can say that all vertices are well linked in that this can be made formal. Every vertices can, can send all to all flow. So with small congestion, but they are well connected in some sense. Okay. Now, if you have that, even after adding self loop, a lot of self loop on the boundary, it remains an expander. It, it implies that the boundary nodes here are even more willing to each other. Okay. okay. Anyway, this is just intuition, but my point is that once you work with this boundary link expanded decomposition, it's nice. So look at the same tree that we looked before. But let's say that this tree on each level, you do bodily link expanded decomposition instead of normal expanded decomposition. Okay. Uh, yeah, please. If you add self loop after doing the decomposition, it might destroy that. It might destroy. It. So, so I don't actually add self loop after doing normal expanded decomposition. I just said that there is some algorithm that actually guarantees this. Okay. okay. So, look at the tree that is now defined by repeatedly contraction, but on each level, you do this boundary link expanded decomposition. It gives you some tree, I call it expanded hierarchy, and we call it expanded hierarchy, and it's very useful in the following sense. It actually capture all mean cut structures, not just pairwise mean cut, but all in the following sense. So choose any subset, not just one node, right? Any subset A and subset B, the mean cut that separate A and B in G would have size basically almost the same, but up to n to little one factor in this tree. So if you look at the, the mean cut that separate A and B in this tree, is the same thing as mean cut in G. Okay. So this is super strong, right? It is a single tree that capture all cut structure in original graph. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the weight on the tree is defined. Yeah. So good. The weight on the tree is defined like this to be precise. So each node here, you just take the degree, like the capacity of tree edge is really just the degree of that node in the graph. If you look at the, the second level, just take the degree in the contracted graph. Edge going up. Yeah. Oh. No, no. It's the degree of the edge going out only. Yeah. Good. So, so you have that. Okay, there is a single tree that capture basically all cut information about the original graph. 
Now, what is nice about this tree? It's a tree that really is defined clearly from expander. So, so now I just claim to you that you can maintain this hierarchy, this tree, in fast update time. But that makes sense because expander are robust. And now, dynamic algorithm on trees are easy. So whatever you want to solve, you, you can maintain this tree and just solve on top of the tree. Okay. So once you have dynamic boundary link expanded decomposition, you get dynamic expanded hierarchy. And now you have a tree. Solve it on top of the tree, and you get a bunch of problem, a bunch of application. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, good. So, so that there, there is really not no edges between the level. Like there are only edges. There are only three edges really. So, No problem. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Anyway, yeah. So you you can get like a, all kind of cut dynamic cut algorithm from this tree, and in like a, what the most basic problem is just checking if U and V are connected. That can be solved for sure, just because you can solve even in cut. Okay. All right. Actually, I almost am out of time, but I really want to tell you about the last thing, expanderization. Um, so this is actually very different from the last two things and not quite well known because it's very new. So it, I want to tell you that if you are given lower diameter graph, you can expanderize it in some formal sense. So let's say that you have a graph with flow diameter D, think of D as polylog. What is possible is this. You can actually compute edge capacity of a graph, like SI capacity on each edge, all right? Such that once you put this capacity, to, um, then with the graph with this edge capacity become an expander. And at the same time, the total capacity is just something like MD. In the beginning, think of G as like a unit capacity. So in the beginning, it has total capacity M. Now it says that you can just increase total capacity by a factor of D so that you get an expander. So let me tell you some example. If you started with expander, it actually have low limiter already. So actually you don't need to increase any capacity to get an expander. But how about this graph? Let's say that you have complete graph on both sides and just connect by one edge. This is totally not expander, but with this theorem says that you can increase the total capacity by just a bit, by a factor of two or something, and make it such that it become an expander. So what will happen is that this edge here, you need to really increase it, the, the capacity by really a lot to make the, the capacity to be big enough. But it says that, okay, you don't need to increase the capacity of other edges too much. Okay. Um, but in a very bad case, like a, a path, Actually, it says that, okay, this is give a tight exam, example because you actually must increase the total capacity by uh, n factor to, to make it, to make the graph uh, to be expanded at all. Yes.
D. D, D is the diameter of a, of a graph. Yeah. So just, yeah. Right. Okay. So this is, this is already nice existentially. I didn't know this before, actually. And we, in the paper with uh, Aaron and Max, we show this, but we pay like some big polylog factor. Can this be shaved into even like a constant factor? I'm not sure, but it's useful. Why? Because in many, like for example, in the dynamic shortest part algorithm, uh, the known approach, you need, you, you are, what, are you, what you are given is like a, the framework will give you some low limited graph for you. And you want this to be robust somehow. So what we will do is like, given this low limited graph, just try to make it an expander and make it more robust. And I will just um, skip this part. Okay, so I'm out of time. So, okay, I just go through this quickly. We have a bunch of tools, expander upgrade on dynamic algorithm, for dynamic algorithm. And even if the graph is not expander, there are tools to make the graph be like to, to give you, give you an expander for you. Um, routing are fast on the dynamic graph and expanded are robust because of expanded pruning. If graph is not expanded, you can have expanded decomposition. And on top of that, you can make it expanded hierarchy. And if the graph has low limiter, you, there is like a nice new way to make it expanded by increase some capacity of the graph. And um, yeah, there are more open problems, but um, let me just stop here. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes. There are, because like for each level in expanded hierarchy, there is an inherent, um, inherent factor that you need to pay something like log n factor per level. And if you have log n level, it's gonna be log n to log n. So as long as you use expanded hierarchy, like uh, you will pay into little one. That's like a kind of bad inherent uh, factor that you need to, to deal with, yeah. Yes. Oh, there is no, yeah, the question is about like, a, about this deterministic cut specifier. So we cannot hope to get any, fast dynamic and deterministic cut specifier yet because even in a static setting, we don't have that. Yeah. The, the fastest spectral or cut specifier, uh, which is deterministic, still takes at least something like n to the fourth time. Even on expander, yes. And yeah, if, if you can do it on expander, you can do it in, in general graph, so. Good. Uh, the question is, which application you get amortized, which application you get worst case. And um, basically everything that is based on uh, expanded hierarchy and expanded decomposition, usually you can make it worst case. But uh, the thing about expanderization thing here um, is kind of, Usually it's amortized. And the reason, the reason is this. When you delete or update an edge, that you put a lot of capacity on it. That capacity usually correspond to update time. And here I only say that you, 
you increase total capacity by not too much. But the time that you spend on the edge with high capacity would still be a lot. Yes, monotone. Yeah. Yes. Can we bound? The question is can we, in this expanderization, can we bound the, the, the total capacity even in the dynamic setting? Oh, okay. Worst case. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, so the worst case, um, the worst case capacity on of of some edge can be as big as m. Like, and this is an example. You need to put m capacity here. Yes. Good. The question is that is there like a equivalent decomposition for vertex expander? And the answer is yes. Also, like um, like it's quite easy to, to compute it deterministically. Um, not quite easy, but you can use the tools to make it work. The interesting question though is that um, how to maintain this vertex expander decomposition dynamically? That is not. That is not in the literature, at least. But I think it should be. But you can do it. Yeah. All right. So I guess I'm a bit quite uh, out of time. So thank you so much, and uh, see you tomorrow.